Hello and welcome to the news in Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa received a telephone call from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud. King Salman expressed thanks to His Majesty the King for the measures taken by the Kingdom in response to the statements made by Netherlands Information Minister, which embodies the solidarity between the two kingdoms and reflects the unity of GCC countries. His Majesty the King affirmed the depth of fraternal relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and the cohesion of the GCC, praying to Allah the Almighty to protect Saudi Arabia and bless it with everlasting security and stability under its wise leadership. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Algerian President Abdel Majid Tabon on the 67th anniversary of November Revolution. His Majesty the King wished the President good health and happiness and the people of Algeria further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadabia Palace. The Cabinet commended the outcomes of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's visit to the UAE, where His Majesty met with the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan. The Cabinet highlighted the importance of the meetings in further strengthening the well established bilateral relations between the two countries and their people. The Cabinet commended the advanced levels of coordination and integration between the two countries that reflect the strength of Bahraini Emirati relations. The Cabinet commended the outcomes of Bahrain's participation in the Middle East Green Initiative Summit and the Future Investment Initiative, where both delegations were led by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Cabinet commended Saudi Arabia's role led by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, in adopting initiatives that unite international efforts to develop global investment pathways and ensure the protection of the environment. Following His Majesty the King's address during the opening of the fourth session of the fifth legislative term of the National Assembly, in which His Majesty called on business owners within the Kingdom's manufacturing service and economic sectors to propose additional initiatives for comprehensive economic development, the Cabinet announced the launch of the Economic Recovery Plan following the global repercussions presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the presentation contained in the Memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance, the plan aims to achieve five initiatives. The initiatives include creating promising job opportunities, making Bahraini citizens the first choice in the labour market and employing 20,000 Bahraini nationals, in addition to providing training for 10,000 Bahrainis annually until the year 2024, as well as facilitating commercial procedures and increasing their effectiveness to attract foreign direct investments with more than 2.5 billion US dollars by 2023. Additionally, the plan will aim to launch strategic projects worth more than 30 billion US dollars, developing promising sectors, contributing to the growth of the non-oil GDP by 5% in 2022, and strengthening financial and economic stability in order to achieve fiscal balance by 2024. The Cabinet affirmed Bahrain's support for Saudi Arabia to host Expo 2030, noting Saudi Arabia's capabilities and skills in organising international forums and its leadership in unifying international efforts towards facing challenges and enhancing prospects for development. The Cabinet discussed several memorandums during the meeting with the following outcomes. The approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding the follow-up to the implementation of the 289 observations within the 2020 to 2021 National Audit Office Annual Report. The Cabinet decided to refer three observations that may have criminal suspicions to the General Directorate of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security as well as referring 12 observations to the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs and 274 observations for administrative follow-up with ministries and government agencies. The memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding two MOUs between Bahrain and the UAE, which aim to expand new areas for bilateral cooperation between the two countries. 
a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft decision regulating how to respond to foreign requests to recover assets and funds obtained from criminal activity with the aim of combating corrupt practices and returning funds of illegal sources to the countries of origin. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a UN request to implement an agreement regulating the regulation between Bahrain and the UN resident coordinator after its decision to separate its duties from the UNDP resident representative. The Cabinet reviewed the following topic. Memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft law amending some provisions of the decree law regarding the transfer and transplantation of human organs. The Cabinet then took note of the ministerial reports, including participation in the 76th session of the Executive Office of Arab Ministers of Social Affairs Council. The 6th Ministerial Consultation Meeting of Asian Labour Sending and Receiving Countries, Abu Dhabi Dialogue, the ADD, and foreign participation of ministers and the visits of foreign delegations to Bahrain for November 2021. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the victory of Paris FC, representing victorious Bahrain over Dijon 1-0 in the French League 2, is an important factor to continue achieving positive results in the coming period. His Highness explained that the outstanding efforts made by the team were a source of appreciation and pride, especially as it is keen to achieve victories, which have become the focus of attention. He also noted that the victory over Dijon will increase the players' desire to continue achieving positive results. His Highness Sheikh Nasser wished Paris FC success in his upcoming matches. The Speaker of the Representatives Council of Azia Zanal held a meeting with the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Parliament Affairs, Ghanem bin Fadl Al Buenin, and the company government delegation in the presence of the First Deputy Speaker, Abdul Nabi Salman, where they discussed means of cooperation and joint coordination between the Representatives Council and the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. Zanel stressed the need to continue joint efforts between the legislative and executive authorities in order to improve and develop the national economy and achieve public interest, especially in light of the accelerating pace with which Bahrain is recovering from the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic. Zanal praised the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and his continuous follow-up on the joint national efforts, cooperation and coordination between the two authorities, which resulted in a package of legislations that enhance the national economy, advance the civilization achievements of the Kingdom and overcome exceptional challenges. She hailed the national initiatives offered by the government within the economic recovery plans, stressing that citizens are the pillar of development. The Shura Council held its weekly session presided over by its chairman, Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh. The session began by approving the minutes of the previous session and then the Council Secretary General read the Council statement where it condemned and rejected the offensive statements made by the Lebanese Minister of Information. It also expressed support for the measures and steps taken by Bahrain and GCC countries in this regard. The session then reviewed and approved the report of the Services Committee on the Social Security Law it discussed and improved the report of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee regarding the final account of the Future Generations Reserve for the fiscal year ending on December 31, 2019, and the report of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee on a proposed law on instalment seal. Within the framework of the content of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's address, on the occasion of the opening of the fourth session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Council, in which His Majesty called on business owners to propose further initiatives for comprehensive economic development. And following the approval of the Cabinet in its session today, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to launch a number of initiatives aimed at developing the economy and creating qualitative opportunities for citizens, the Economic Recovery Plan was announced today during a press conference. The Minister of Finance stated that the Comprehensive Economic and Fiscal Plan is an investment in the nation's people, businesses and the future of Bahrain. He added that the swift healthcare and economic action 
taken by the government throughout the COVID-19 secured the foundations of recovery as evidenced by the real year-on-year -year growth of 5.7% in the second quarter of this year. The Kingdom is emerging from the pandemic with reasons to be highly optimistic and the plan announced today aims to turbocharge that recovery. The Minister stated that the plan is also a concrete statement to secure a balanced budget by 2024 and provide long-term fiscal sustainability with eight new spending and revenue initiatives and complementing broader economic competitiveness enhancements. For his part, the Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil Hamidan, stated that the economic recovery plan comes to continue maintaining the path of economic growth, creating promising job opportunities and making citizens the first choice in the labour market by strengthening partnership between the private and public sectors. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Alziani, stated that the economic recovery plan initiatives aim to promote the positive growth of vital sectors in a manner that enhances the role in supplying the national economy. For his part, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman al Mouayed, noted that the Hope Fund to support youth projects and initiatives continues its efforts to support promising youth energies and motivate them to create and innovate in their projects. The CEO of the Economic Development Board, the EDB, Khalid Humidan, added that the EDB continues to intensify its efforts to attract direct investments to vital sectors to achieve the objectives of the Economic Recovery Plan. The Minister of Transport and Communications, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Bahrain Airport Company, Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, and the Regional President of FedEx Express in the Middle East, Indian Subcontinent and Africa, Jacques Meuse, signed a 10-year contract to operate 9,000 square metres in the new express air cargo area located north of the runway of Bahrain International Airport. The Minister of Transport and Communications cited the efforts made by the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in supporting the logistics sector and pushing development projects towards more integrated and interconnected levels, which contributes to creating more opportunities for citizens. The Minister stressed that the conclusion of the strategic agreement by Bahrain Airport Company and FedEx Express marks the beginning of a new phase of growth for both parties, noting that Bahrain International Airport is now fully qualified to keep pace with the increasing local and regional demand for high quality air freight services characterised by the highest standards of safety, efficiency and reliability. The Minister stressed that the general vision of the logistics sector aims to increase the competitiveness and speed the linking of procedures between Khalifa bin Salman Port and Bahrain International Airport and the speed of land port procedures with the aim of making the Kingdom of Bahrain the preferred choice for e-commerce. Hence, a number of strategic goals were set to be achieved by 2030. The Minister of Housing, Bazem Ben Yakal Amhamar, affirmed the Housing Ministry's keenness to ensure that its current and future projects are capable of catering to the service and facilities needs of the beneficiaries to provide them with the requirements of decent and quality life and achieve the sustainability of housing services. He pointed out that the government attaches great importance to the environmental aspects in housing projects by allocating green sites and paths in all modern towns. The Minister congratulated His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister on the occasion of World Cities Day 2021, observed worldwide on October the 31st, under the theme Adapting Cities for Climate Resilience. He asserted that the Housing Ministry is making tremendous efforts to achieve His Majesty the King's vision to provide advanced services to the citizens in its projects across the Kingdom's governorates within a comprehensive vision of urban development that copes with the future development challenges and the population growth rates in the Kingdom. He indicated that the Urban Development March, currently witnessed by the Kingdom, is based on a number of foundations that guarantee its sustainability in response to the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and in line with the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals approved by the UN. The Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF, inaugurated the training course for the second batch of volunteers for the Reserve Force. The training sessions were held at the Royal Bahrain Air Force, the RBAF, in the presence of Assistant Chief of Staff for Human Resources, Major General Sheikh Ali bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the Military Sport Association, in the presence of Assistant Chief of Staff for Operations, Major General Ghanem Ibrahim Al Fadal, and the Royal Bahrain Naval Force, the RBNF, in the presence of RBNF Commander Commodore Mohammed Yusuf Al-Assam. 
A number of volunteers from the civil sector are participating in the course of the Reserve Force for Citizens, including relatives of workers of the retirees in the BDF and the National Guard, both military and civilian, in the implementation of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, the Supreme Commander. The course has been well prepared with well-equipped classrooms, teaching aids and best trainers to achieve the set goals. It includes theoretical and practical military studies to qualify the civilian volunteers in the best possible way. Bahrain strongly condemned and denounced the explosion of a car bomb near Aden International Airport in Yemen, resulting in dozens of deaths and injuries. The Foreign Affairs Ministry affirmed Bahrain's full solidarity and support to Yemen in all measures it takes to restore the state, defend its sovereignty and maintain its security and stability, renewing its firm position that rejects all forms of extremism and terrorism.